Good morning, Internet. This is Alex Dostoyokus, and it is Tuesday, the 22nd of September, 2020. And we have another medium New York Times Sudoku for you today. And we're just going to play it normally today, so nice and slow. Oh boy, we've got two cages that are quite... No, three, four cages that are quite empty, so they all seem to be a bit clustered. Um, let's see how we get on then. So we're going to do some Snyder notations by looking at, at the numbers from 1 to 9 and what we're aiming to do is use the numbers that are on the board to lock the same numbers into specific cells. So for instance, looking at the 2s, these two 2s locks a pair of 2s down there. So um, in fact, before I start, I should probably look at this cage because it's already locked in with um, the only three cells left so I know that well four and nine can't go in that cell because of that so four and nine are locked in these two cells that means that this cell has to be a two so there we go solved two which erases a pencil marking two up there so unlocks another two for us so now these twos and that two locks a pair of twos up there um, and basically what we do with um, Snyder notation is we only pencil mark in two candidates within any cages where possible so I've got two twos here and a two over there so the twos can only be in these two cells but if there are more than two candidates like in this cage I've got two looking into these three cells and the two looking into these two I've got three possible places for the two so three possible candidates and I don't pencil mark them in with um, the kind of guidelines of Snyder notations and um, and the idea is that by just having a consistent rule of um, only pencil marking in two candidates at a time as soon as you eliminate one possibility, one of the candidates then you know that the other candidate must be correct um, and we'll show that, we'll demonstrate that later on I'm sure so let's look at the freeze so these two threes locks a pair of threes in here and um, threes are locked over here as well because of these two threes locking the rows and this three locking the column so whilst we're at it um, can we do anything else with okay so these two threes and that three locks a pair of threes down here as well and that's all i can do with the threes i believe and um, three three yep and and the reason that um, I go from 1 to 9 rather than fo focusing on a cage at a time is because sometimes you find um, pointed pairs and triples. Actually, I didn't really explain the pointed pairs because I don't think it's really come up yet. But, um, I'll demonstrate later. But um, these two fours locks a four up there. And these two fours locks a pair of fours over here. And let's see, four, 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 four. So what I want to move on to is um, a semi-advanced, an intermediate technique, I suppose. I've locked the fours in columns twos and three in this cage. And if I look down, I can see that fours are also locked in columns twos and three in this cage as well. Well, four has to be in column one somewhere, but it's now been excluded from these two cages. So that means the four has to be in the middle cage. And we happen to have another four there, so we can pencil mark them in. And I guess this is an example of why it's useful to look at one number at a time because by focusing on the fours, I can notice, um, I can spot these kind of patterns. And um, whereas if I focus on a cage at a time and go through one, two, three, four, I have to revisit all the other cages and rows and columns to see what's going on. But if I focus on one number at a time, it's a lot easier to spot these kind of patterns. Um, so that's why I do it from um, one to nine, basically. So I think that's sort of four's done. So let's move on to fives. Um, fives, I've got five unlocked here because of this five, this five, and that five. So now these two fives locks another pair of fives up top and anything else. So these two fives lock out these four cells. So I've got another pair of fives there. So this is an example of pointed pair. Um, pointed pair of fives here because, well, they have to be in one of these two cells within these this cage. That means wherever it is, the column four has been taken up. So 
these cells can no longer be fived, basically. I mean, this, these three cells can't be a five because of that five anyway, but none of these cells can be fives as well because the five, whilst we don't know which of these two cells it is, we do know that, we do know that it's in column four, so... Um, and we call it, um, I think we call it pointed pair because, um, or pointed triples if you've got three fives there, but we haven't. Um, but we call them pointed pairs, I think, because they point in a direction, basically. So they're lined up as a column, so they point up to the column and locking out these cells. So with that and that five, I can lock another pair of fives in here. So that's the power of pointed pairs. Um, can I do anything else? I don't think I can, so I'm going to move on to sixes now. So, sixes, um, I've only got two of them, so, and they don't lock the sixes in any cells in particular, so, they also don't form any interesting patterns for me, so, I think I'm going to move on to sevens. Um, I have a pair of sevens there because of these two sevens and that seven over there. Um... Let's see, don't have anything else on the seven, so let's move on to eight. Okay, we've only got one eight, so what I do is um, I consider the eight a weak number, and um, I may come back to that later, but I'm not sure just yet. Um, let's look at nines. So nines are locked in these two cells because of these two nines, and whilst they, whilst they are lined up, they're not really use for as a pointed pair because I got these two nines from the horizontal cages anyway so they're not pointing anywhere useful for me basically but these two nines locks a pair of nines over here so that has acts as a pointed pair locking out these two cells and that nine locks those two cells so the nine has to be in here and here we can demonstrate the power of Snyder notations once I place the nine I'm going to be erasing a three so I've only got one candidate left for the three, basically. So I know that the three has to go there because I've already eliminated the three from all the other cells. And since I always pencil mark in pairs, if I knock one out, the other must be correct, basically. So um, since I've just placed the three, what I like to do is rather than waiting and doing another round of one to nines, I like to immediately look at the three and see if it does anything useful. So for example, these two threes actually locks a three over there. So I can place this three, which erases a four pencil marking. So I can place a four as well. So does this four do anything for us? Um, it locks a pair of fours over here because of this four, that four, and that four. So that doesn't do anything else for us. So what I do is um, I backstep. I rewind back to the three and see if the three does anything else. In fact, it does. It erases that pencil marking. So now I can place another three. And this three erases a two. And this two erases a four. So that four erases a four down there. So the four has to go in this cell. And the nine has to go in that cell. And nine erases that nine. So places a nine over there. <clears throat> So this is kind of the example of um, when Snyder notations works well, um, it can form a chain reaction that unlocks a lot of numbers for you suddenly. Um, so I've done a lot, so it's a bit hard to see what to rewind to because I've done many steps now, but um, I did notice that this four along with that four and that four actually locks another four in there. So basically this four locks the row, that four locks the row, this four locks the column, so four goes here, erasing a three, so three goes here. So this three also works in tandem with all of these threes locking another three over here. So I think that sort of three is done. So that's not too bad, um, not too bad at all. Um, so what we can do is um, go back to the nines, um, but if you're kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, if you're observing, um, you may spot that I can actually place this two. And the reason I can place this two is because um, I've only got three cells left in this row. Um, so I consider this um, a weak area, and I like to always look at the weak areas anyway. But the two can see into this cell, so the two can't go here. And, um, and I think so, if the two can go there, I would have already pencil marked them in. And the fact that I have a pencil marking two within this cage, but not in the other cell, 
implies that the two can't go there so that immediately tells me that the two goes into here but even if we you know if we're not quite sure well we can look at the two sees into this cell but this cell also sees a two up there so that's not a two as well either basically but the shorthand is um if i recognize that um, i'm only looking at the cells within the cage and i've only got two pencil markings of two i've pencil marked in order twos then i know that the two can't go there anymore so i can place that two and um, that two also had the effect of locking another two over there as well because the two can't go there two can't go there and two can't go there so now these twos locks the final two up there so all the twos are done as well so so whilst the puzzle started off quite intimidating it's already proving to be quite kind of like um it's full of interactions basically between the numbers and then um, we're able to place a lot of them quite easily and um, what we may want to do is continue on with the nines because um i've kind of lost where i was with the the chain the chain of um, numbers but if i stay on the nines these two nines and that nine locks a nine over there so now these two nines and that nine locks a pair of nines here as well so that i think is all the nines pencil marked in so we can do different things now we can do another round of notations by just going around the board saying okay these ones locks a pair of ones up there um etc but that's no fun why don't we try and focus on the weak areas and um, you'll find that i used um the weak areas a lot in the hard sudokus but um, for medium sudokus it's a good chance to practice basically so weak areas are areas um any dimensions that has only two or three cells left so for example i've got three cells left in this cage three cells left in this row and three cells left in this column as well as this two cells left on this column so that's the weakest areas area area that i can see so why don't we have a look at that i've got um i'm missing a five and a six and i can't actually place either of them so oh well so that's not a, that's not a resolvable weak area but let's look at this one first uh, one one six and eight. Oh, i picked a bad one haven't i because um i can't see any of the so what i do is um in each of these cells i'll look around the columns and the rows to see if i can see the numbers that i'm looking for so one six and eight one six and eight can't see any of them so i can't resolve this at all um let's look at another weak area uh, what would be a good one um maybe so i think we i think eight is a weak area weak number even so um it may be worth looking at here um although i actually want to pencil mark in the eights in here because of that eight but i'm trying to stay rigid to no actually i'm going to pencil mark in the eights because um sometimes just by incident by accident you may spot that um you can play some numbers in fact i just noticed that that four actually erases that pencil marking four so that places another four so all the fours are done now so now that leaves me two with two numbers um and they are eight and six and eight so whilst we can't directly see any sixes or eights we do have a pointer pair of eights and this is kind of why i wanted to um, pencil mark in the eights because um, with the pencil markings of eights i know that that can't be an eight anymore and i've only got a six and eights left in these two cells that has to be a six and that has to be an eight and now that leaves me with another triple in here which are one five and sevens um whilst i can see the five in this cell locking the five there, i can't see one or seven so i'm gonna leave that for now um i've got another triple developing here which are one eight and something else but um i already know that these two cells can't be eight because i've got an eight in the cage and an eight in the roll so the eight has to go up here so now i know this is one and one and f no what is it a oh, one and seven um i can't see one or seven actually so that's a shame so we can't place that yet either so let's move on and um 
look at other weak areas. I'm just doing it as pract as a practice. Um, in fact, this is useful for giving you a bit of um, hint, tip even. Um, so I'm looking for three numbers on this row in this weak area. But judging by the pencil markings, I've got one and five pencil marked in. That implies that um, providing my pencil markings are correct, one and five are two of the numbers that I'm looking for. Um, and I happen to see one and five down here already. So this cell has to be the third number, basically. So if we count up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we see that's an eight, actually. <clears throat> so can we solve the one and five here, though? Um, we can't because we haven't got enough. We can't see a five in this cell and we can't see a one in this cell. So let's look at eight instead. Well, this eight, along with that eight, forces an eight over there. Uh, the other thing it does as well is locks a pair of eights in there because of these two eights. So does this eight do anything for us? Um, this eight locks a pair of eights down there and nothing else really. So not super useful, but it's not completely unhelpful either. Um, let's have a look at this cage. Um, I've got a pair of sixes there and I'm missing a one still. So again, I don't know where the one is. So the one is giving me a bit of a, tr giving me a bit of trouble. So I wonder if I should try try and find the ones. Mm, I don't think I can actually. So um, let's continue on doing the weak areas. We've got another weak one here, which is one and oh, we already looked at that, haven't we? One and seven. What about here? I've got six and six and one. <coughs> I can see a six here in this cell. So on this column, six can't go in there. Six has to be up here. So that places a one. And so finally we have a one. And that erases that six. And that six also locks a pair of sixes over there because of these two sixes. And that six over here. And in fact, this six locks a pair of sixes over there. And they act as a pointed pair looking this way. So it locks a pair of sixes over there as well. Not super useful just yet though. Um, so, what was I looking at earlier? I was looking at something else. Was it an 8? No, it was a 1 in 6, wasn't it? So, oh yes, so now I've got 1 in 5 locked in these two cells. So, 1s have to be over here. Um, in fact, these are 1, 6 and 8. I uh, don't know where the 8 is, so can't resolve that just yet either. But we've got a little bit more 1s going on now, at least. Um, I've got one five and something else here. One five and seven. Uh, so it seems seven is giving me trouble now. But if we look at this seven, um, it locks this seven out. Oh, actually, it also locks that seven is also locked out. So that's pointer pair. So pointer pair means seven can't go there. So seven has to go in here. Is that useful for me though? I don't think it is. Um, so. This is 6 and 5 and 6, and I still can't solve that, so, bummer, uh, 7 and 6, no, so maybe it is easier to just do some pencil markings, so let's, um, let's just go around the board and see if we can do any more pencil markings, so 1s are no good, 2, 3 and 4 are done, so what about 5s, fives? 5s, fives. huh, Five, 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 nothing on fives. Six, six, oh, I've got a pair of sixes there as well, and that potentially is useful. In fact, no, the six can't go there either because of that six. So I've got two sixes there, locking the six over here, so that unlocks the nine. And that nine also erases a nine up there, so that gives us another nine. And I think that's all the nine's done. So now, has that helped us at all in this one seven pair? No, it hasn't. But, okay, I'm looking for one and seven in these two cells on the row, but I've got a pointer pair of ones looking down on that cell, so there has to be a seven, therefore that has to be a one. And if that's a one, then these are one, and this is the seven. And if that's a seven, then I've got another pair of sevens there because of these two sevens and that seven. Um, I've got another pair of sevens down here. No, hang on. I've got an 8 here, 7 here because of that 7. 
So now that can't be an 8 anymore. 8 goes in here, and this is a 6. So 6 can't go in here anymore, so 6 has to go there, which means 1 goes here. So 1 can't go here anymore, so 5 goes here, 1 goes here. Uh, does that do anything else? Um, this is now an 8, and if that's an 8, that can't be an 8, so that resolves the 8, resolves the 7, resolves the 6, and this is now a 5. That 5 locks a pair of 5s up there, so that can't be a 5 anymore, so 5 and 7. And the other thing that it does, I um, just want to take this opportunity to talk about it, um, even though actually that 7 would have erased the 7, but when you have two numbers occupying the same two cells within a cage, or even a column or, or row, it forms, um, oh no, actually, let's stick to the cages. Um, if these are the only places that the fives can and six can go, then no other numbers can go in them, because if this is a five, then that has to be a six. Whereas if that's a, that's a five, then this has to be a six. So if a seven goes in there, then five and six will share the same cell and it wouldn't work at all. So let's push the seven now, seven and one, and that one resolves the five and one over here. And we have a 1 missing here, with the 5 and 6, that 6 solves the 5 and the 6 over here. And that's today's medium New York Times Sudoku. Um, I hope that's useful. Again, I would, um, I would ask for feedback if um, my medium puzzles are too slow or too quick. Um, if there are things that you want um, particular help with, please let me know um, in the comments below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe if um, these videos are useful for you. Otherwise, I shall see you tomorrow. Bye!